Well, good morning, Canyon Hills. This is a bittersweet day for me. It is a day that we get to celebrate our 34th year anniversary. It is a day that we continue in our Psalm series, and it's a day that we have to say goodbye to one of our amazing pastors who is over there, and I'm not going to look at him probably for the, all the rest of the service. Um, so if you're new to us and you're just coming into this right now, please visit us next week. We'll have a more regular service because there's a lot to be thankful for. And I just want to spend some time today just kind of reflecting on what God has done in our church, meaning you and your lives and the impact that all of you are making as a church. Just to remind you, the Bible says that the church is not a building, although we're meeting, meeting in a building, but rather it is the people who come into that make up the church. Christ is the head. We are the body. And every single part of you, no matter what you do, give or take part of, you make part of that body. You are part of every gift that you have and talent that you give into the church is what makes us who we are today. As I started to reflect of what has done, God has done over this last year, there's so many things to be thankful for. And I thought of so many stories. But one of them that came to mind is a story of a little boy named Hector. I shared a story with you last year right around the fall because we went on a mission trip down to our sister church who you saw the pastor and you saw the kids from the school down there. And we went on a mission trip and I noticed this one kid by the name of, I didn't know his name at the time, but he wasn't wearing a uniform and he felt a little, looked a little out of place. In fact, he looked a little lonely. So naturally I inquired and I went to the director there and I said, hey, what's, what's going on with that boy? Why isn't he wearing a uniform? They all wear uniforms. And she told me that this was Hector's first week, which is why it made sense that he, he wouldn't wear a uniform. And that his grandma had just dropped him off in the school there for the, that first week because he was just dropped off at his grandma's because his mom and his little brother had passed away in a tragic car accident, leaving him to be an orphan. Hector now lives with his grandma. When I saw him, he looked hopeless. He looked confused. But somehow, some way, he found himself at this church that started this school. This past month, May 10th, is when Mexico celebrates Mother's Day. It's May 10th on a very specific day every single year. And I was told by the director, her name's Candy, that, that Hector got on his knees and prayed and thanked God for helping to heal him over this last year. And I know this boy, and some of you guys do too. And, and he prayed, and he thanked God for giving him his mom all of those years that he had his mom. And he prayed and he thanked God for the grandma that was now taking care of him. You see, God knew that this boy was going to go through this and he needed to somehow find a way to heal him and he knew exactly where to send him. He somehow, in my opinion, miraculously found himself in the first French school in all of Mexico that was started by the First Friends Church in northern Mexico, that somehow, some way, you and I had something to do with that by starting that church 18 years ago. And as we think about what God has done over 35 years, there's so many stories, miraculous stories like Hector, that somehow we have a hand in being part of. And as we study the book of Psalms and we look at all of the emotions that the psalmist and the writers of Psalms were just invoking, it kind of just reminds me of Psalm 100. You see, Psalm 100 just beautifully captures the, the spirit of thanksgiving and worship, which is how I feel this morning. It reminds me of God's faithfulness and that it's really been evident in our lives over this last year. Psalm 100 verse 1 starts out by saying, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. You know, as we sang this first song this morning and we're just thankful to God, some of us can't help but just shout for joy. You know, shouting for joy is not foreign to us. I think all of us can relate to shouting because we do it at sporting events and we do it at, at birthday parties. We, we do it at concerts. So it's not foreign to us. We know exactly what the psalmist is talking about because we all shout when we're passionate about something. And this verse is really a call to worship, and it extends to all the people, it says, meaning it extends to all creations. No matter what you believe in, God is inviting you to participate in that worship. 
And one of those things that I'm personally celebrating over this past year is how many people have come and maybe even you have experienced moments that have filled your heart with gladness here at Canyon Hills. And whether you have found yourself in times of plenty or in times of need, our voices have been lifted Sunday, every single Sunday, recognizing that we are here to worship God no matter what we've gone through. Verse 2 says, worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. And, and, and I love this part of, the, of this psalm because the word worship that is used here is the Greek word abad which literally means to serve or to work. So this, this scripture here is saying that you worship God by serving him or working for him with gladness and that you would come into his presence with singing. And again, as we reflect on this last year, I am reflecting that each act of kindness each moment of service that has been an opportunity to really to enter into God's presence with gladness and with singing. And celebrating an anniversary is a testament of that. It, and it gives us this joy that comes from that dedicated work or service to our God. I am so thankful for everyone that calls Canyon Hills their home. I am so thankful for all of the volunteers that make Canyon Hills what they are. I think of the people that unlock the church early in the morning on Sundays, about 6.37. I think about the people that make the coffee so you guys can have coffee. I think about all the wonderful children's ministry teachers that are out there with all of your kids. I think of the worship team, the tech. I mean, there's so many people that it takes to pull off a Sunday. And I'm just so thankful for that. And I would say, may your heart be glad. This week... We got a tray of sandwiches in our office, and it, ha and it happens often. It's done by this guy by the name of Mario Gutierrez, and I, I asked him for a picture, and of course he took a selfie of it. And, and he sends me a note, and I want to read you that note, because it encompasses that everything that this church has done and highlights God first and foremost in the lives of the people that come here. This is what Mario writes. I started attending Canyon Hills about 20 years ago. In 2009, two days before my 50th birthday, I had a major stroke. I had a difficult recovery, but Canyon Hills was there for me. My family, my two daughters were there for me, supporting me. Shortly after that, I was compelled to serve God as I realized that it was him who was getting me through. So I started serving at Canyon Hills. I started cooking for the homeless in Long Beach. Uh, I started doing different activities. In fact, I was part of the facility team at Canyon Hills for over six years, and I never thought it would be possible for me to go to Juarez because I struggled physically, I didn't think I could help, and I would get tired easily. But he says, I negotiated with Carlos, and he allowed me to take naps during the day if I went. <laughs> so I went for the first time, and I remember being busier than I could have imagined. I was in charge of all the tools and running around the whole time. He says, and I've been to Juarez four times since then. I thought that the worst of my health issues were over until the doctor told me that my kidneys and my heart was failing and that I was going to have to, my only hope was to be put on a transplant list. And in January 18, 2017, I found myself at UCSD San Diego where they found a donor for a heart. And I received a heart transplant and a kidney transplant. Carlos and Larry were there to pray for me. Isn't God good? I spent seven months in the hospital in skilled nursing recovering. He says, today I still serve 15 to 20 hours per week at the food bank. I cook in men's ministry at Canyon Hills, and I basically do whatever Carlos asked me to do, like clean grills. <laughs> I am so thankful to God for his mercy and his grace that he took a guy like me who didn't deserve it and gave me a new lease in life. I am thankful for my Canyon Hills family as they supported me and prayed for me every step of the way. I am thankful for my family and my daughters. And he closes by saying, God is good. You know, Mario is here. I don't know where he is, but I'm going to have him stand up. Can you stand up, Mario, so people can see? <laughs> Mario is a walking miracle. And every time I embrace this man, I am reminded, like he said, of God's mercy and his grace to help us 
in our time of need. And we're just so thankful for your life, Mario. And I started to ask myself this week that, of course, God gets the honor, God gets the credit, God gets the glory for everything that has happened in our midst. But there's so many people to thank. But where will we start? Who should we thank for Hector's life? Should we thank the director, or they call the, the principal in, in the school in Juarez, her name's Candy? What, or should we thank uh, his teachers, her name is Sarai and Laura? Should we thank the pastors that started the school, Pastor Sergio and Nancy, who you guys saw on the screen? Or should we thank the, all the tons of Vacation Bible School we just announced the very best summer? Should we thank the VVS from last year who raised money for the school in Mexico? I think of people like Missy Hillen and I think of Sherry Berberg and our very own, you know, children's pastor, Josh Powers, who actually took it upon himself. God compelled him to raise that money to go down to Mexico. Or should I, what about the person, if you've been here a while, you know that every Christmas we sponsor kids down in Mexico. There's a family here that sponsored Hector and every single month pays for him to get an education and to get two meals a day. They took part in his transformation as well. What about the elders of this church who week in and week out are, are, are praying, they're engaged, and they're supporting the vision, and they're supporting ministries like the ministries in the school in Juarez? What about the countless amount of people from this church that over the last 18 years have made it a labor of love to go down there and physically build a church and a school just like Mario did four times? Who should we thank if not every single one of you who takes part in that because you are the body? The Apostle Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians, he says, chapter 6, he says, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God has been making it grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but God who makes things grow. For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field. You are God's building. Folks, you and I are just in God's field. We plant or we water, and that is it. But let's praise the one and the only one who can make things grow. This anniversary is about highlighting what God and the evidence in our lives and what he has done for us, in us, and through us. Verse 3 says, Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. And this verse reaffirms our identity in God, that we are his creation, his people, the sheep of his pasture, and the sheep know their shepherd's voice. They listen to it, and they follow the shepherd. And over the last 34 years, we've seen his guidance and his provision, not only in our lives, but in this church, like a shepherd tending to his flock. God has cared for us, he has provided for us, and he has led us on a journey. And I don't have time to tell you the countless stories of God using people, even outside of this church, that compel them to donate here and do things here because they see something, God is doing something in our midst. We are in a journey, a journey of discovery, a journey of diving deep into God's word because we feel God is getting us ready for something and he's preparing us and, and we are excited about it. If you've been here last year, he has led us on a journey of true repentance from our ways and culture. He has led us on a, on a journey of forgiveness, forgiveness of self and others that is critical for us to advance in this journey that we're in. We are ministering to new people in new ways, and I'm just here to tell you that God has done his part. He has brought all of you here, and his constant presence and his unwavering care has been evident. And because of that, verse 4 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Thanksgiving and praise are the central theme to this psalm. And as we celebrate milestones, our hearts are filled. My heart is filled with gratitude. We look on a past year on countless reasons to give thanks. And each blessing, each answered prayer, each moment of grace calls us to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. 
The vision to reach, teach, mend, and send is unfolding before our very eyes. We are reaching young families for Christ. We are reaching the unchurched. We are reaching the broken. We are increasing our community, growing in numbers. And it's evident through all the families. It's evident for all of you guys being here. We are teaching God's and changing truth, even if it goes against culture. And God is, continues to get us ready for more. We are mending broken people. We are pointing them to healing ministries where they might be able to find hope for the future. We are sending people on mission, not only locally, but globally. In fact, our last mission trip to Mexico, over half of that team was brand new people that had never been on a mission trip. We've helped, you and I have helped send the first missionary. I'm so excited about this. The first missionary into Ecuador. Our sister church in Juarez raised up a guy by the name of Jose Olivas, and he had a calling to go out and minister to one of the unreached people groups by the name of Shuars in Ecuador, and you and I took part of that. Our student ministry continues to grow under the leadership of Chase, and people are being generous to this ministry. In fact, we are, we're able to charge less for summer camp because people keep uh, donating to that ministry. And folks, I get fired up when I hear some of the stories that come out of the youth group. You guys have to know that we have some world changers that go to our youth group. I get excited them because some of them are, are having experiences of transformation. Some of them are actually being called into ministry, and it's happening here. You know, we have needs at a facility like this, and we, we had a campaign last year to be able to just do some much-needed repairs, and you guys came through, and we were able to do most of those, and more to be done. We have sports ministries that have started. I don't want to talk about softball because we're pretty bad at it, but <laughs> nevertheless, there's a bunch of guys that show up, and we, uh, we, have, we have a lot of time. Our facility is being used in ways you guys don't even know. That court in the basketball court is being used by basketball teams outside of this church. We host events here for our denomination. We, are, we hosted 50 pastors at a leadership conference in the Philippines over the last year. We continue to work in Mexico to encourage them. And, and here's a big one. We endeavored to finish a parsonage, build from scratch a parsonage down in Mexico. And it took a lot of teams from here to go down there. And the pastors just moved in this about a month ago they just moved into the parsonage so it is finished we were able to accomplish that but you know what i'm really excited about as well is that we have a group of dedicated pastors here at this church if you don't know them you should get to know them they are committed they care deeply for their ministries and they honestly and truly care deeply for you except for matt because he's leaving of course but <laughs> <laughs> you know you meaning this church, really is, is, is just getting outside of yourself in so many different ways. And I believe that's one of the reasons that God blesses this church and compels other people to come and join it. Because verse 5 says, For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. You know, the psalm concludes with this powerful affirmation of God's character, his goodness, his steadfast love, and faithfulness, they're enduring and unchanging. As, and as we go through this 34 years and we reflect and reminisce, we are profoundly aware of God's goodness. His steadfast love has been the foundation of every single relationship, and his faithfulness has, has been the anchor through all of our seasons. So I ask that you would join me and that you will rejoice and give thanks for all that God is doing in our midst. God has given this church a vision, I would even say a burden, a task that we can't shake. We want to endeavor. We want to continue to move forward. And we have always, as a church, been a church planting church. I don't know if you guys know this, but we planted five churches here and in Mexico over the last 34 years and 10 churches over in the Philippines. It is part of who we are. It is part of our DNA. It was started by our founding pastor, Larry Mendenhall, and we are continuing in that DNA. So our next year, this is what it's going to look like. Join me in praying for this. We are in the process of starting a brand new church in El Paso, Texas. That is the border from Juarez in conjunction with our sister church. In fact, this is a picture of Mario and Sol. You guys have met them here. They were here at Canyon Hills for a couple of months, about three months, and we've sent them out into Juarez to start 
the building process, if you will, by starting life groups. This is their first life group. They just got there and they already had a life group started last Thursday. And we're excited because from here, there's going to be a core group. And I pray that when we celebrate 35 years, which is a huge milestone, we will be celebrating a brand new church in El Paso, Texas. As you heard, Pastor Sergio, we want to work together. The goal for the next year is to start and complete the junior high school in Mexico. We're going to need teams with hammers to go build. And uh, I want you to join me. This is, this is an exciting time for us as we expand that school. And then, of course, one of the things that I'm dreaming about, it's a faith dream. I want you to pray so that it can become reality. And some of you are going to join me. You just don't know who you are yet. But I'm going to go visit, and some of you are coming with me, Jose Olivas, in the jungles of Ecuador. Who's in? Who wants to go? Raise up your hand. There you go. I love it. We're going to go visit this guy who is now trying to get into the language of learning Shuar. I don't even know what you would call that dialect. Uh, but we want to go. And for those of you that don't know, I received my calling into ministry back in Ecuador. So somehow I need to go back and, and, and see God at work there as well. We're still working with one of the missionaries in the Philippines that we're going to send. When I say we, I mean, I mean we. We're working, we're filing paperwork, we're doing a bunch of stuff to send her over into our sister church in Mexico where she can be a teacher. Her name is Levy Grace. That's her there. She's just waiting for her visa to come through. But you and I get to be part of all of these amazing things. So I would say, will you dream with us? Will you pray with us? Will you say, how can I help? Will you say, here I am, choose me? I have to tell you that no one is less important than anybody else. We're, we're all the same. We're all part of God's field. You're going to plant. Someone's going to water. And we're all going to watch God make things grow. You know, some churches are known for different things. Some are known for their sheer size because they're huge. Some are known because they have a very dynamic teacher in the pulpit and they do great work. Some are known because they have amazing worship and lights and all kinds of cool stuff. Well, we want to be a church known, not but by who is on stage, but because we give God the glory. We want to know as, be known as a place where God is at work, and simply that. So I would ask, somebody once told me, you know, find out where God is at work and join them. And, and I get to see it because I'm here day in and day out. I get to see God at work in your lives inside of these walls and outside of these walls. So I ask that you would join me because God is at work at Canyon Hills. And again, part of that vision is to be a leadership factory, train people up, equip them, and send them out by either planting churches or encouraging them to go relaunch churches. And one of those things that we get to do today is we get to say goodbye and we also get to launch and release one of our dear pastors by the name of Matt Dietz. I really don't have words to express how thankful I am for him and all that he has done at this church. But those of you that have been here for a while, he's been here thir almost 13 years, know exactly what an impact he has made. And so that he has more time to speak, I'm just going to call him up. Matt, can you guys just help me welcome Matt to the stage? <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, Carlos. <clears throat> so I've been here for about 12 years now, a little over 12 years. In that time, I've had three different job titles. Um, I've gotten married. Uh, we've had two children and raised them into this church family. And some of the high school students that we started discipling and mentoring when we first came in are now married and having babies and starting families of their own. And it has been such a joy-filled last 12 years. Uh, so many wonderful memories, so many exciting things that we have seen God do through this church, through all of you, through this place. And it has been so heartwarming and such a privilege just to be along for that journey. And you as a church have been there with us as well. Um, you have supported us. You have encouraged us through the good times and even through the hard times in our life. Um, through our infertility journey, through my heart surgery, uh, through all of our health issues with our child, you have gone above and beyond as a church just embracing the calling of God to extend grace, 
to extend love, to extend compassion and mercy and kindness to our family. And I can't thank you enough. Thank you. When I look out at all of you, I see God. I can feel God moving through you. I can feel God living and breathing through this church and what he is doing. And my family, we are direct recipients of it. So thank you. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for allowing us to be part of your family, to be part of your lives, to walk alongside of you these last 12 years. Um, it's been such a great journey. Like I said, there's been so many great memories that we've had over these years, and we want to celebrate that as we launch into this new step of our life. And that's why it's so emotional for us, because it's not something we do take lightly. We heard the call very clearly from God that he wanted us to do more. Um, knowing that this church, as Cause was saying, is a leadership factory, and knowing that the, the mission from the very beginning of this church was to go and make more and better disciples of this world by reaching and teaching and mending and sending, we, Tiffany and I, have been asking, how can we truly grab a hold of this? How can we launch into this? How can we embody this vision, this mission, this calling with every part of our lives? And it started by us just surrendering and saying, God, what does this look like for our family? And he tapped on our shoulders, and he says, I'm going to call you to do something uncomfortable. I'm going to call you to be open to going where I ask you to go, to doing what I ask you to do. Even though you may not know what it looks like, even though you may not know what's on the other side, I'm asking you to be faithful. And so we started this process almost four years ago. Uh, we had several conversations with Carlos and, and our elder team and, and the staff and just praying and asking, what does this look like for our family? And we started taking these cohort classes just to kind of train us and, and give us some different tools and some techniques and some understandings about the inner workings of ministry and pastoralship and just equipping us and training us, but still not knowing where it would lead or what it would go to. And then about two years ago, uh, we were blessed by this church and by our denomination to go to an assessment uh, where it was a grueling two-day process. Uh, Tiffany and I went to this assessment, and it was pretty much uh, casting your vision, talking about your calling, uh, talking about your relationship with God. I had to get up and give a sermon, and I got judged by people on my sermon. Uh, we had to sit in one-on-one -on -one conversations to talk about our emotional health, our relational health, our intimacy health. I mean, it was a rough <laughs> two days. But what was so amazing is at the end of it, Pastor Carlos came down. And he was there with the assessment team, and they all reconfirmed this calling in our lives. And we were given the, the green light, and it says, you guys are called to church plant. You're called to be an extension. You're called to go and to make more and better disciples. And still, we didn't know what that looked like, so we came back and we started praying with Carlos and the elders and the staff and, and really just leaving our hands open to what God would bring to us. And it was earlier this year uh, that an opportunity arose, uh, an opportunity at Corona Friends Church, which I have a picture of the church right here. Um, their lead pastor was retiring, and they were looking for a new family to come in and, and to help spiritually shepherd the church. So Tiffany and I, we went out there and we visited, and I had two different opportunities to guest preach at the church, and each time we went, we just felt something from God that was saying there's something here. And we came back each time and we prayed, and, and we were in conversations with Carlos and the elders and just being united with one another and just praying if this is where God wanted us to be. And then when the opportunity arose and the application opened, we applied for it. And we prayed and we fasted and we went on this journey with our staff and with our elders here and, and we finally accepted the offer when it was made. And so we're so excited to be able to step into this new journey, fully knowing that every single step of the way we have just felt peace and we have felt unity with the body here at Canyon. And when I think about unity, uh, Psalm 133 comes back to my mind. In Psalm 133, it says this, how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It's like a precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. See, there is something truly amazing when God's people come together and they stand united to make an impact for his kingdom 
to make his impact in this world, that it not be about us, but it be about us working collectively as one body in one mind in unity together to change the world for Jesus Christ. And that's what we long to do. We want to continue in this unity. We want to continue in this partnership and find opportunities to bring the two churches together, to find opportunities to create something amazing that God is going to use to change our community, to change our culture, to change the world that exists around us. And we are so excited for it, even as hard as it may be to be able to be up here to say goodbye today. And uh, as we're going through this, this passage, I love this imagery of the oil that's pouring down. And, and if you don't know, it's an Old Testament thing that would happen. That after they would bring uh, sacrifices and offerings to the altar, the high priest would take this oil and pour it on their head. And it would go over their head and, and go through their beard and come down on their robe. And as it would go down the robe, on, on the robe underneath, there was this, this chest plate that would have these 12 stones that represented the 12 tribes of Israel. And the idea was is that as all the sacrifices and all the offerings were done, the oil would cover over, it would anoint, it would unify all 12 tribes. Even though they were separate, even though they were far off, they would all be united together in the love, in the mercy, in the covering, in the wisdom, in the passion of who God is. And it's this beautiful symbolism as everything being united together to be made clean in front of the Lord. That's the Old Testament. Here at Canyon Hills, we have a little bit different way of anointing people in oil. Uh, It's a lot more chunky, and it takes a lot longer to get out, and it smells really good, though, after a couple days. Um, But in all seriousness, that's really what it is. It's about being united together, that even though we're on the 91, just up 18 minutes on a good day, six and a half hours on a bad day, um, (laughs) right? Even though we're not too far away, our heart's desire is still to find ways to be united. Uh, We love the culture. We love our roots. We love the DNA here. We love all of you. And we want to partner with you and find ways to stand united to make more and better disciples for Jesus Christ. And so here is my final charge to you as your associate pastor. God is on the move here. I can stand up here and say that with confidence. Over the last 12 years, I've seen a lot of things happen in this church. I've seen a lot of staff come and go over that time, and I've seen God move in very different ways. And I can stand with 100% confidence and certainty in my heart right now. God is doing something so powerful, so amazing right here, right now in all of you. But there's still work to be done. He is still calling us, even though we may be stepping away, he is still calling you to fully embrace, to celebrate, to partner, to stand united in this vision, to reach the families for Christ, to teach the word of God, to mend those who are hurting, and to continue to send people out on mission, to fully embrace this, to fully embody this, and find ways to where you can be excited to say, God, I see you at work right here at Canyon Hills. How can I get involved? What does that look like for me? How can I continue to push forward into this? And so church, I just encourage you to stay strong, to know that God loves you, to know that God sees you, to know that God hears you, and more importantly, above all else, to know that God is there for you, to know that God is with you, And God is doing something through you right here and right now. So answer the call. Be ready, whatever it may look like, as terrifying as it may be, be ready to say yes when he comes knocking. And watch the blessings that unfold. If you recognize that very end of that passage, it says, the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. Friends, when we stand united this morning, there is a blessing that comes upon us. So let's be united together. Let's continue to seek after God's vision for your lives. God is on the move here. I am so excited to see what he's going to continue to do. And don't worry, you're not getting rid of us this easily. (laughs) We'll be back. We'll be around. But thank you, church. Thank you for letting me speak into your lives. Thank you for letting me into your homes. Thank you for letting me be a part of your family. Thank you you for allowing me just to share the word of the Lord with you. 
Thank you. Would you pray with me? Father, we, uh, God, we humbly come before you this morning. God, we know just how amazing it is when your people come together, Father, and we can stand united knowing that this isn't goodbye, Father, but this is a moment of excitement. This is a moment of encouragement. This is a moment of amazing things as we just are launched, Father. We are just released into doing what you have called us to do. Father, where you have called us to go. And I pray, Father, that you just continue your work here, Father. You have put together such an amazing staff of pastors, such an amazing group of elders who are shepherding, who are leading, who are hearing your voice as they guide this church, Father. And I pray that you would allow this congregation just to get excited, Father, to feel you on the move, to feel your spirit coursing through their veins, coursing through this place as they go, Father. And I pray that you allow us once again just to stand united, celebrating that it's not about us. Father, it's not about who's up here, but it's about the work of your hands. It's the faithfulness. It's the goodness. It's the mercy, Father, that we can see over and over and over again. God, we are so grateful for you, for what you have done. And God, we pray that we will just continue to see it. So Father, we just surrender to you this morning. God, we come before you We sing praises to your name, knowing that you are greater than anything that comes against us, Father, and that you are calling us to continue the work. Thank you for using us, Father. Father, thank you for using my family for using Tiffany and Zeke and Oliver just to be a part of this church family, Father, and the love that we have received, Father. It's more than words could ever express. Thank you for giving us the family we never knew that we needed. And God, I pray that you just allow those bonds to stay strong as we go from this place this morning. So Father, we love you and we just surrender in excitement to you this morning. We pray this in your name. Amen. We have a tradition here at Canyon Hills and that we're going to commission Matt, Tiffany, Zeke, and Oliver to go out into the mission field and we're going to release them that there would be full of blessing and abundance. And this is our elder team. If you guys don't know, everyone that's stepping up on stage right now is part of our elder board here at Canyon Hills. And I'm going to ask uh, Brad to, to start praying. And if you guys can symbolically just extend out your hand as if you're laying hands on, on Tiffany, think of one of them, of the kid of Tiffany, Matt, or all of them as we just pray them out and encourage them. First, I want to say thank you to you guys. You guys have just been an incredible part of this family. Just loved your gift in this. So grateful to have you guys here serving with us. You guys have been amazing. And by the way, we're, we're not sending you off. Like, you're, you're still part of this family. You realize that, right? We're not really letting you go. You're going to go teach somewhere else, and we're so proud of that. And that you follow God's calling to do that. So we love you guys. You're still part of this family, too. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for, for Matt and Tiffany. We just thank you for their, their giftedness. We thank you for their willingness to follow your call in their life to go take this amazing journey that they're about to embark on, Lord. And we just know that you're going to do great things uh, in and through them over these next couple years, Lord. And more importantly, we just know that you are going to help them to reach many, many for the lost that are lost, Lord, and bring them home to you. And we're just so grateful for that. Lord, I just pray that you would just guide them and direct them and lead them in every way, and everything that they do here at this new church. Lord, that let pray that they would just be obedient to wherever it is that you're calling them to, to go and what you're calling them to do. Lord, I just pray that you would put your hedge of protection around them and their kids. And Lord, just protect them from the evil one as, as they're doing great things for you. We just know the evil one loves to enter in. Just put your hedge of protection around all of them right now and for the next a couple years as they go embark on this journey. We're grateful for them. We're thankful they've been part of this family. We're thankful that you have given them to to us. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Can you guys just help me thank Matt and Tiffany? Thank you.